All right, I'll call this meeting to order at 7.30 p.m. April 16th. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for this April 16, 2019 regular meeting of council be received and approved. All, uh, I'm sorry. Moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the April 2nd, 2019 council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so we'll move on right down through to communicate or 6.1 municipal operating grant letter. There's some information there. Discussion on that. We'll just move on. Next was the new funding model for Swan Valley District Recreation Commission. You see that the province of Manitoba has made some changes there. I remember hearing about this at the MSOS meetings here last uh, month and talking about basically, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Poole, that we no longer will have to apply for those funds and then we'll just automatically go straight through to the province or to the municipalities. Right. So if there's discussion. I guess I had one question about it and I see uh, uh, some of the funding and I was wondering about some of the dollars as far as we can see that the town of Swan River receives quite a small portion of, of what's compared to other municipalities. So I was kind of curious about that and uh, how that, if they mentioned to us how that comes to be. I, <coughs> no, I can send everybody a letter, but uh, and I'll quickly read it so that it's for the record Thank from you. Patty. Um, it was because Derek had exactly the same question which was, that doesn't seem to make sense. Um, so, um, Derek asked the same question, blows together, I put together, share it tonight's council meeting. Hope this helps. Funding is based on contribution promise 550 per capita with a cap of 5,500 per municipality. The 2001 census is used as the best census per district, so funding was not reduced from the previous year. Census numbers taken from the partners before amalgamation. There's 5.5 reduction in provincial funding in 2016. Uh, and 2016 re remained the same. So we ended up with, um, from that, we ended up with um, 51, our actual number uh, was 5197. Um, Arm of Swan Valley West got Swan Rivers, the Arm of Swan River, uh, which had 50, the same number as we did, but they also got the Village of Benitos and then uh, Minnetonis Bozeman got the village of Bozeman, the village of, Bono of, of uh, Minnetonis, or town of Minnetonis, I guess it was. I was not a village, but. And then the arm of Minnetonis, and that is why they got 9656. Okay. So there's a reduction, there's the amalgamation, they left them alone, and then there's a reduction. So despite the fact that they have much lower total populations than us, um, they get more money. And that's. The census numbers are vastly different. You'll see that when you come to rise. So just I ask you to note that in the RM of Swan Valley West is 3338 then, and RM of Minnetonis is 2010, and we are 4032. So um, that's a total of 10,000, uh, 9,500. But the numbers change. Uh, I, think, I think they change fairly significantly. Okay, so that's on that funding model. So, I, <clears throat> is there a discussion of, of the future of Discorrect then? And if it's well, we're just we're, we're continuing. We have a, 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 a sort of a meeting to talk about it on the 25th. Um, there's a smaller group, which is the chairman, myself as vice chairman, and two other members. We're going to have a meeting. We're going to continue on the same basis. But really, this is a bigger discussion in terms of intergovernmental services and whether or not we think that recreation is something that should be a shared responsibility or not a shared responsibility. If it isn't, then there's no reason to be have a Swan Valley Recreation Commission. If it is, then everything should go through the Swan Valley Recreation Commission. It should be a shared service. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. <coughs> and moving on to six point, sorry, I lost my place here. 
uh, 6.3, the Swan Lake Watershed uh, District, April 15th letter. You can all see that, had a chance to review that. A few of us had a chance to uh, sit in with the uh, group on the 11th, I believe it was. <clears throat> and the letter and invoice from the Swan Lake Watershed District, that would be for 2019. So I'll open up for discussion. Councillor Delorier. Well, I, I guess the province's uh, stand on this is either we take it as proposed or we're out. This is how I'm reading this letter. I, I'm not sure if anybody else reads it any differently, but so I guess we have option option one is we modify our position and and we under great protest go with uh, what everybody else wants to do, or we. Uh, Maintain our position and let them kick us out. Well, unfortunately, that's, that's Councillor Gray. Oh, sorry. I don't know that that's even an option because because what happens is under the existing laws and under the new act, the minister sets a levy and then the municipality required to pay the levy. Um, we'd have to withdraw. That is, they don't kick us out for non-payment. They're entitled to actually collect interest from us. So it's, it's, it's the worst of all possible worlds. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, there are a couple of things that I want to draw people's attention to. Um, and I will concede, I'm just looking for the act here. Okay. I, I want to draw to everyone's attention the current act, because the, the amendments haven't come into effect yet for this year. They're effective for next year, effectively. Right? So, there are three things, which is section 25 of the Act, which says that, um, uh, oh, I'm going to start earlier. No, there, 25. Yes. Um, I'm looking here for all of what's necessary. Um, the board, under section 25, 20, 25 1 25 2 are to set the amount necessary. 25 3 sets out the formula um, for how money is to be raised. There is no alternative, there is only one formula. There is no ability to have other amounts assessed. And the formula is based on your sub district spending, half of it, and half of it on your district spending. And it's based on the total assessment. It doesn't say on previous years. It says the total municipal assessment that pertains to that the rateable land. So there is. So we have we have been overbilled and overpaid for the last great number of years because our rateable share of money has been over, has been overcalculated, and we're entitled to a bunch of money back. In my view, six years probably because there's a limitation on how much back we can claim for the overcharges for the last six years for us. And there is no ability to have a lesser amount. The municipalities are not entitled to make such contracts. So we would, we're not, they're in a difficult position. And for this year, um, we certainly don't have to agree because the formula for this year is set by the current legislation because the amendments haven't, to my knowledge, um, effective, aren't effective. Moreover, there's a provision here, and I'm just looking where it is, that says, yes, 26.1, the board shall not later than the last day of February each year for each municipality a statement of the amount to be raised according to that formula, which they fail again to do. Um, and the result, um, they have some problems with the assessment at all. So, moreover, my reading of the current 25, I think it is, and, and the 8.3, is that this is the existing model unless the minister chooses to do something different. He's entitled to choose to do something different. That's true, um, but the provision before that there's a that there's a percentage implies that there's an agreement on the percentage. That is, that the municipal that it would be illogical that and and I'm just going to go to the rise amounts. This may be the, the lawyer in me coming out. Um, so, the population of our of Minnetonas Bozeman is 16, um, 53. The population of Swan Valley West is 2829, so they have 4,400, 4,500 people. We have 4,000 people. So 4,500 people um, can tell 4,000 people, because they have 80% of the votes, 
um, that they have to pay double what their actual assessment is. That seems illogical in the extreme. And, and um, our municipality hasn't agreed. Moreover, uh, if 20% of the ratepayers signed a, a petition, we'd be required to go to the municipal board for assessment. Not that I think that that's a great plan, but it would be up to the conservation district to defend and, and to present why that would be the case. The problem for the municipal, for the watershed district is that they came to a conclusion, as we argued with them last time, based on numbers that they wanted, not based on Swan Valley West, particularly, Swan, the arm of Swan Valley West, uh, particularly said, well, we won't pay more than this amount. And so he, they had to they work the numbers back because they wouldn't pay more than that amount. That is not an appropriate process in any, by any stretch of the imagination in my mind, for the determination of how much people should pay. The process should be, here's what the principles are, work out the formula based on the principles, and then you multiply it, you get whatever you get. And if, I, if our rate was more, then I would be in favor of paying that. I, when we come to rise, I'm going to say the same thing, because I think we should remember we will be paying more. But that's because the formula makes sense. And I can say, here's why we decided on the formula. We spent two full meetings debating the formula, and we came up with this formula because it made sense based on what we were trying to achieve in economic development. So we said at that meeting that we would be writing a letter to the minister. I'm going to suggest, Mr. Mayor, that we write a letter to the minister objecting to any assessment other than under 25-2 that uh, this is a decision made by bureaucrats, not by the minister. The minister is the one who has to decide to sign off on a, uh, in an election year, on a uh, charging our municipality double what it is supposed to pay. And we've already made a reasonable offer, which is that we go to the assessment, which everybody would pay less, and that we, for this year, voluntarily pay the extra sums. And that in the, in the meantime, we negotiate what that would look like for the extra $10,000. That reasonable offer was refused. I don't think we have any choice. We have to write to the minister and say this is improper, that, that you should not exceed, that you should follow our model, and that the total budget is therefore going to be reduced by $10,000. But they already have a whack of money in, in reserve that they could use to make up the $10,000. There's no reason for them to do this. So that's my view. And, and unfortunately, I don't think we can just wait for them to kick us out, but we can tell them that we're not prepared to pay that assessment, and then we'll wait for his determination. And at that point, we'll make a decision. Councilor Delorier. I absolutely agree with everything you've said. And the, exactly. the, fight, the fighter in me wants to, wants to fight this, because you're right on, on everything, every point you've made. But the pragmatist in me says that we have a bunch of other stuff we want to negotiate a lot sooner than the minister's going to make any kind of decision on this. I mean, we, we want to go next week. And we have, let's face it, we have very little leverage for the other stuff we're asking for. They can easily shut the door on us and not be out a heck of a lot, especially at Toronto School um, So I guess that it, part of me... Part of me knows that even if we did go with what, what the other three municipalities want, our act of, of, of goodwill probably wouldn't be viewed as an act of goodwill very long because, you, you, know, you know, we live in a, in, a world, in a situation where, you know, they may, they may, they may take it into consideration that we, that we bent on this and, and see it as goodwill, but for how, how, much that'll, how much goodwill that'll actually buy us, I don't know. But on the other hand, it'll buy us nothing if we dig in our heels on this. And I am really torn on what to do because I know we're gonna shoot ourselves in any kind of negotiation we hope to have if we, if we dig in our heels on this, but digging on, in our heels is the right thing to do. In response through you, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> we can always negotiate next Monday on this and say, sure, fair enough. We relent, we're prepared to go with it on an ongoing basis because it's part of a bigger package. Because that was always our plan. That was always our thought, that it's, it is part of a bigger package. Until then, though, what assurance do we have that it'll do anything? Because quite candidly, two of their councillors made points that made it seem as if the town of Swan River was perpetually taking advantage of them, which is 
I, I, I can't speak to that. I don't know. I wasn't involved in those discussions, but but I certainly, through a measure, took it, uh, took offense because I certainly hadn't tried to take advantage of the town of uh, or on the arm of Minotaurus Bozeman, and and my principles are always the same. They are. Let's talk about what's what's the process. Let's work out the numbers. Uh, let's work out the process and the principles, and then we'll work out the numbers from the process. And you know, I, I've said this before: we're never wrong to do the right thing. That 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 if if the Army of Minnetonka says um, we're not going to go into your shared service agreement, okay, I don't think that the six thousand dollars that's involved here is going to buy us them being in. I think the exact opposite. I think if we back down. They will see see us as, as being willing to as being able to be bullied and to be able to be because that's what they're doing. The two municipalities are bullying us. They're saying um, and they're bullying the province, the Iron Swan River in particular, uh, Swan Valley West, where they said, um, you know, they won't pay more. And so you will call that the that Ms. Uh, I can't remember her name. Um, the, the young lady from the province said. Well, the pro this doesn't work without Swan Valley West, so if they say that's all they're going to pay, then I guess that's what we're going to have to go with. And that's what her letter says. So, I, I look, I, I'll, this is not a hill I'm prepared to die on in terms of this council. It is a hill I'm prepared to die on in terms of other councils, in terms of saying, look, this is a bigger negotiation. We're certainly willing to talk about all kind of measure of things. But at this point, I don't see why we can relent. In any event, but but I will exceed the majority at any point. So uh, I think that basically at this point um, we do have a resolution that we have already passed. What our feelings were, so that resolution stands. So if anybody <clears throat> wants to bring that back and have further discussion, then this is what that is what the decision of this council is at this time. So moving on. From there, uh, we'll go to reports of committees and uh, Superintendent of Works report. Questions to Mr. Poole on, on that report. Councilor Dorier. Um, last year when we replaced the grates on 5th, did we get any complaints or feedback on them from, from the public or it was? There was one complaint the day we started removing them, yeah, from one business, but we just explained the reasons why and we haven't heard from them since. Okay. Have we ourselves noticed, like, did the rocks spill out or, or they stay pretty contained? They stay pretty contained, I'll be honest. The, like, when they first go in, you compact them, the loose rocks will go out, but over time, okay. it's pretty solid. No tripping, uh, no, no trip report. putting heels in the grave and suing us. Okay. This is okay. a good thing. So resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor Morio. Further discussion? All in favor? Councillor Dory, did you have a question? No. Yeah, All right. Other reports? I'll start with uh, Councillor Gray tonight. Well, I, I don't know that we have, uh, I mean, we have um, one report, or one thing to, to report upon. Um, that is the, uh, and others will be reporting on many of the same things. So, uh, the, in terms of the arena, I think we have, um, we are close to a decision. We actually had sort of a proposal that was going to come forward and a decision that was going to be made tonight. Um, but we received a late um, not late in terms of timing, but late in terms of late today, um, submission for another item. So administration is going to go through the scoring process on our near procurement policy that's going to be a bylaw in due course. Um, they're going to go through the procurement process, score it, come back with a recommendation. We as a result are going to have a special meeting on Thursday. Um, we won't have any administrative support, um, but there, there's only one item of business which will be um, which of the three proposals to take forward. Uh, as you will recall, the, pro the process now under procurement is that there's a scoring system to go through for the proposals and the best proposal, the best proposal um, is then uh, determined in the second and the third and down. 
and then the, the price is compared. So if there's a significant variance in price, that's then evaluated and we get an opinion as to which, whether or not the savings that are identified are worth the difference in scoring. So we will wait and see what the scoring is. Um, I don't want to prejudge it. I, I don't know what the res results will be. I don't think Mr. Poole knows what the results will be, but he and his Hankelman are going to go through it. They'll provide us with a report and we'll make a decision at the, on the Thursday meeting. And it will be really, here's the report, here are the recommendations, and then the debate, and then a vote. Um, we obviously have gone through have gone through the process, and I'm sure somebody here, uh, I guess uh, Council Gloria is the chairman of that committee, but we are close on the CIO in terms of we've got at least a candidate who is a possible. Uh, I won't go into any more detail. Um, we have our last two pieces to go through, um, and then we'll make a decision. Um, and again, I don't want to prejudge that or say anything about it. Um, I don't think right, rise is coming up. Um, there are some problems with the rise budget, so uh, when we do get to our budgeting meetings, uh, you should recognize that um, the actual request for rise is misstated in here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, our, our actual request, and it may be that we decided to keep it to this number and I've forgotten, but our actual budget for RISE for next year is somewhere close to $140,000, um, which would be a substantial increase from our last year's budget and would cause, in fact, the Town of Swan River to have a, a quite significant increase in the amount that we would contribute. That RISE in, in amount is reflected primarily in two items. Um, those are um, the increase in salary for a full-time economic development officer because recruitment of a part-time economic development officer will be quite problematic. And we have, as Mary's board decided to develop, carve off um, tourism, a half-time tourism position and a full-time economic development officer. One of the things that Councilman Tony has determined uh, through his research um, and it's going to be presented to the, board, to the RISE board is that um, most economic development officers are paid a base salary and then a significant portion of their salary is based on bonuses, based on uh, achievables. I think every single municipality will be happy to hear that. Um, that that's what we really want to pay for is deliverables. Um, it's unfortunate Council, uh, Councillor White sent it around an email um, about one of the RISE board members who made a, a, a thing on, on the radio and, and I think he misapprehended what Councillor Gade was trying to say. Uh, I don't think Councillor Gade was trying to say that there was no tangible benefits ever uh, or to minimize the advantage or the or the work that went into getting um, an increased number of medical professionals in town. What he was really talking about was the last two or three years when there had been no apparent increase in economic activity and every municipal, you know, our municipal government, um, Mountain, uh, Minnetonas and Swan Valley West had all questioned what we were getting for the value we were getting. And so I think we've changed, what he was trying to say was we've changed the dynamic. We need to give it a year or two to see if the new dynamic is going to develop anything. If it doesn't, well, then we should cut it loose at that point. But we should give it a chance. That's what I think he was trying to say. I don't think, I, I, I don't think he was intending to minimize the advances in, in medical professionals. And so uh, I just wanted to explain that. Fair enough. I don't think there's any other things that I needed to report. Okay. Councillor Friesen. Um, I guess I was at that meeting at Super 8. I'm sure Johnny would probably talk more about that. It was the Swan Valley Business Consortium. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, I enjoyed the uh, presentation that the two ladies from Dauphin did on diabetes and how they encouraged people to participate in bringing clothes. Uh, also had an age-friendly meeting here on the 9th. Um, K. Marco, Patty, um, Dwayne. And we had uh, Tess Shearer, Trish Shearer. And apparently they are uh, very interested in uh, investigating uh, retirement What's it called? Places where people can go from their home instead of going into a nursing home or a lodge. Assisted living. That's it, assisted living. So we're going to have another meeting uh, 
and uh, maybe investigate something like that, see how we can maybe get something like that here. Uh, also, 55 plus plans are in motion um, for June 11th. And Canada Day plans are also in motion, and I don't think we got a grant, did we? Mr. Poole? No. Nothing? But we will receive a grant. No, we won't. Why? No, we missed it. <clears throat> End of November is to be in. And I dropped the ball there because I thought it was always the end of J January before. And for this, some reason, I missed it. And that's a federal government grant? Yeah, Canada Heritage, it's called. But so we probably won't be having the kids' bouncers. It was a choice of bouncers, fireworks. What was the cost? How, how much was the grant? The grant usually comes in around $3,500, and that pays for <coughs> bouncers for the kids at the park. The town always picks up the cost for the fireworks, which is also 3500 so I'm assuming that we can do that. And that's pretty much the only cost that we have for Canada Day. Everything else is volunteer. Go Stampeders. Tickets are selling like crazy. That's it. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> you made a motion uh, towards me that uh, uh, am I supposed to know something more about the 55 plus? Well, you said you yeah. want the mayor to come and bring greetings oh, oh, at yeah, the absolutely. opening ceremonies. Yeah, yeah I'll be yeah. there. I'll be there. Okay. okay. Call some more, y'all. Um, met with, uh, on the 11th, with uh, Councillor uh, Kosnick with, and Councillor White. Uh, we met with an individual here in town uh, informally regarding uh, a property regarding the potential space for the doctor expansion clinic. It was very uh, informal, very preliminary, just to see if he would be interested in selling it and potentially what price. Um, it was a very productive meeting. Um, no price was agreed to or not even talked about because don't have the authority to do that, but it was just an initial discussion to see if he would be interested in selling the property. Um, so that uh, Councilor White will report that back, I guess, or Councilor uh, let's get back to the Health Foundation along with the doctors uh, group. What was found out there, um, I attended the uh, Swan Valley Watershed Conservation District uh, with uh, some other fellow councillors where we discussed uh, the funding issue with there. Um, again, I'm also part of that. I see both sides of the coin. I'm torn um, as to which way path to take. Um, so some more pondering on that one. And on the 11th, we also Protective Services Committee uh, met with the fire chief and he did a little bit more reviewing on the fire bylaw and some of the uh, policies that he's him and his officers have reviewed and brought to the committee for uh, review and then we're going to bring that to the rest of council on one of our off Tuesday meetings for a discussion before it's brought to council as a whole um, for that. So, and attended the meeting here where we had one of the contractors or potential contractors do a proposal presentation on the temporary arena fix and it was very informative and learned a few things there um, that we can do have a potential solution to keep ice going for a while. And uh, today um, we had a personnel meeting with uh, representatives from the union QP regarding uh, the new positions that were transferred that were um, out of the bargaining unit that were now back in the, or have transferred into the bargaining unit and just working out the details and exchange conversation on how to make that a smooth transition. So and that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Council Morio. Council Morio. <coughs> Um, on the 11th at the watershed meeting, and boy, uh, I guess first of all, I want to give kudos to Councillor Gray. I think he did an excellent job of explaining our position, um, probably better than, you know, I think uh, Mr. Mayor made a comment about understanding you better ourselves, and I think that even goes for me. You know, he, he broke it down into what the basic problem was, and I, I think he did a great job on that. I, I hope that the other people in the room were able to absorb it the way we were, but maybe not. Um, had a uh, 
union meeting today, this afternoon, uh, to discuss the new positions, as Councilor Morio said. Um, then other than that, I think uh, nothing else to report. Councilor Latoni. Um, I had the pleasure of attending the business consortium meeting as well, and just a shout out to that group that have, of all the good work that they do to bring businesses together to discuss needs and issues that are arising out of out of the community and, and great work going on. With that, they also had a few meetings with Rise and Tourism. I had the opportunity to have Chuck Davidson, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, that I was able to take to a hockey game and, and just have some form, informal and formal discussions with him um, in regards to economic development, tourism, trade, um, everything along those lines. Um, Chuck is an amazing advocator for the Chamber of Commerce and an, an amazing man in what he does and to bring economic stimulant to communities across Manitoba. So. Good job on his behalf. Also attended the snowmobile um, proposal of, of creating a, a trail from here all the way up to Churchill, which is exciting. Grim trail that is all the way from here to Churchill. Um, uh, yeah, that's super cool, super exciting, good for the community. Um, just in regards to Phyllis's opportunity with 55 plus and that uh, assisted living. Um, Perhaps you'd like to propose something to Rise as well, or a conversation, because I think that's something that Rise talks about. We, uh, I think we'd be interested to know that because, um, yeah, and we can talk more about that. But um, had a protection uh, fire services protection meeting, um, and like Councillor Mario said, we w went over some policies um, as well as the bylaw, which we'd like to have all of council be a part of on our next off Tuesday and, and discuss that before it comes to vote here at the table. Um, recreation meeting in regards to the rink, it's great that we have options that we will have a facility um, of ice in the upcoming year, so that's a breath of relief, I think. Um, uh, what else is on my list? The watershed, kudos. To Councillor Gray and in, in explaining our side at the watershed, uh, just a little bit of, of my personal belief on that is that we need to stick to our, our principles. If we develop principles as a whole, I think that we should stick to those. You can never go wrong with the principles that are the ultimately the benefit. So, um, I'm not sure what I wrote there. Just going back to talking about rise, the, um, the budget numbers that we will receive are significant. As Councillor Gray said, we are determining that I don't think that it's going to be possible for us to have another half-time economic development officer, which is reflects in the new numbers, which should be around 140,000, which in our part is a rise of $12,000. What the point that I want to make on that one is economic development is crucial to the viability of a, of a community and of our community to our community and the valley as a whole. Um, so it's not so much the number that represents or that we will represent, it's the whether or not we will have economic development. And if we think that economic development is important, the numbers should fall into place or fall in line. Um, and I strongly suggest that we all think about what economic development can do for, for our community. I did have another important point, but what I wrote down isn't triggering any, any bells. So on that note, uh, go Stamps, go. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I agree on the assisted living 55 plus or whatever the number was, but I think that's very important because uh, there are several communities that have taken that on and there is a need for it. There's, there is absolutely a need for it. I firsthand can tell you that. I couldn't agree with you more. <clears throat> so good luck on that kind of stuff. But uh, for me, uh, I guess April 5th, uh, aside from actually duplicating everything that's already been discussed, April the 5th, I had a chance to sit with the 
liquor and gaming fellow, Mr. Pichet, about the, some of the issues that we had at the arena. We have Steph Peterson, the fire chief and the rec uh, manager, as well as uh, Stan Peters to discuss some things there as far as the liquor and, and gaming licensing. And so out of that, um, I think that there will have to be some, we need to formalize a, an agreement of some kind with the Stan Peters and, and you guys will be filled in on that, I'm sure, from Patty in the, in the coming days or one of your next meetings. But uh, <clears throat> it, it worked out okay in the end, but there is just some things that they needed to uh, go over and discuss. The, um, the other meeting that I had was the Health Foundation that was discussed earlier, and um, Dr. Burnside was actually one of our guests, and, and they did talk about um, the clinic and the need for more space and, and so forth, and where that's going. And there's already been a lot of discussion about that in the last two months or three months or maybe more. And uh, right now they're preparing a study of their own that they're looking at to see what the actual need of space, let's say, for the next 10 or 15 years. They're, they're looking at that, and then they will be able to come forth and present that. And I had suggested that they uh, do that presentation before the G5, at our next G5, so that all the partners can hear what they are suggesting and, and how this whole thing can be formalized as far as if it's an expansion or, or something different. You know, We talked about a lot of different things around this table, and I'm not too sure if all the other tables are having that same discussion. but. At the end of the day, there definitely is a shortage of space in that building that they were talking about. It was built for seven doctors, I think is basically what he was saying. And now they're at like 13 plus two nurse practitioners and a few other ones that are in the queue that we're waiting for. <clears throat> so um, without, again, duplicating anything else that anybody else has mentioned, I just wanted to recognize that uh, recently uh, June Mosion, a really uh, a good person in our community was awarded the, uh, the Leah Memorial Award. This is recognizing her outstanding achievements and significant contributions that she has made to uh, the athletes that she coaches. So good on her. And then another fellow of our community that's been a very outstanding person in our community, and that's Doug Hinchcliffe. And he has recently received the Sovereign Medal for volunteers. So congratulations to those two outstanding people in our communities. And that's it for me, so Mr. Paul, I'll pass it on to you. Councilor Montoni. My last two points came back to me, if it's okay to, okay to share those, your worship. Sure. Um, just in regards to um, um, the property for the doctor um, facility that Councilor Morio and yourself were talking about, I'm looking forward to that report because um, I'm a strong believer that we um, perhaps should continue our view or our vi a vision that was established years ago um, with that. So I look forward to that study and, and see what that says. The other item that I had that I remembered was um, in a discussion with the fire chief in regards to um, confined spaces training. Um, I would like to have that discussion at some point with, with council and add what you feel and add thoughts in regards to that, I'm not sure if at this time is the most perfect time, but that was another thing on my list, and that's all I got, I promise. No, oh, it's all good. Okay, uh, Mr. Poole. Uh, I guess just this taste of what I'm working on is, uh, well, we received uh, municipal approval for the garbage special service uh, bylaws, so we'll see the second and third readings come up next. Uh, the employment training, office space RFPs closed tomorrow, so that should finally be settled. Uh, attended the union personnel meeting today, uh, and I'm dealing with several HR issues, awaiting uh, some lawyer comments on a few of those. Uh, regarding the departments uh, with Ron, uh, just going through a, a current zoning issue and several burning, uh, building, pit, building permits, just assisting him through those. Uh, with REC and Public Works, the fire department, I guess I don't want to spend too much time, but just to just to appreciate the hard work that they're all doing. Uh, they've got a lot on their plate, and Patty's done excellent with, with the arena, finding the information uh, the committee needs. 
Same with Darren with the, the massive project that's starting at the well site, the garbage, uh, uh, the garbage tender. You're juggling quite a bit. Terry, absolutely. Uh, I don't know if we'd be ready for, well, we wouldn't be ready for a budget meeting tomorrow, absolutely, without uh, his extra work that he puts in on top of his eight hours every day, every week. Uh, and uh, the new clerk is, is fitting in uh, quite well. She did the payroll. Uh, well, obviously, Camille's been helping her the last few, but she did the payroll by herself. And just so the council knows, she's she's doing a really good job. Everyone's working together. It's good to see. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm just proud of everybody in the office. I just want to say that. That's good. Thank you. That's it, right? Yes. Make sure you thank everybody on our behalf. Yes. Know, they're doing a good job. Councillor. Sorry, I said I, was, I said I was done, but yes, I just want to uh, commend administration um, and Mr. Ganita. I have had a conversation with him and all the extra hours that he's been putting in and on his part is, uh, it's great to see that. So my high regards to him and that. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> my boo-boo will go back because I actually, <laughs> I didn't see what I had done there, but Anyway, we have to go back Sweet to the handy 7.2.1, 7 and that is resolved that the handy van report for March 2019 be received. Uh, motion, or I mean, moved by Councillor Friesa, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. And we have the fire chief's report. Great. Just as a matter of, of, of law and practice, is there a reason we have to pass resolutions accepting reports for information? Uh, not a law, but it's just recorded in our minutes. So our minutes are our legal. Could we not just simply accept note that they were received? All of them at once in one resolution? Yeah. yeah. Unless we're going to deal with, like, a, shouldn't we resolve resolutions for matters which require debate? Like what would we debate about the report? Typically there's nothing. There never yeah, is it would be because, because it's a report. It, right. It's a factual statement what the person says happened. We might have a policy issue that arises out of it. That would be a risk. And it just, it, it just, we, we can, we, I may have wasted more time than we would have done by just passing the resolution. <laughs> but it's fine, you know, there's always, <laughs> We're always looking to change things, you know, and simplify things, right? So, yeah. if, if that's the case, if, if, we, if we want our, our committee to change the, our procedure or, or how we do this, then we can or lump it together, like you mentioned. We can definitely look at that. Right. Whatever it counts as wish. Right. And then, if there's, a, if there's a policy issue that arises, we can defer that to the appropriate committee for consideration and bring back the policy issue. Because it. Result of the fire chief report <coughs> received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. Okay. I will make uh, everybody do 7.3 again. So 7.4, management meetings. Uh, I'll the resolution first. Result that the management meeting minutes be received. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion, questions? Councillor Gray. No, no, I was voting. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. All right. 8.1 to receive the Swan Valley uh, Rise 2018 financial statements. Uh, did we. Were it's we, fine. Um, so right. I'll move acceptance of that. Seconded. Case of resolve of the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for Strong Economy Financial Statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018, be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio, or I'm sorry, Lintoni. All in favor? It's carried. Um, now the next one. I, I'm going to, uh, the resolution I'm going to make is that we defer this um, to our budget committee. To our committee, the whole respecting the budget, 
um, and, and we'll ask for clarification from RISE as to the actual amount that's being requested. But more importantly, that seems to be a more appropriate place for that to go. Okay, I would agree with that. So this is on the uh, municipal levies for Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy. So if that's the case, then um, we can defer this. Right. We'll be tabled table, to, the, to the budget committee. Right. To the rise. Which committee. meets tomorrow. Right. Well, we'll but, but the budget committee no. meet tomorrow. Starts tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so moving on. Um, should I not have a resolution for 8.3? Uh, I guess we can. I guess it's a receipt. There's two issues. There's a receiving the financial statements and a request for yeah, funding. Yeah, I'll change. But, but where, where we're a partner, like in RISE or in uh, whatever, I, I think receiving, or, or the garbage one, the, the kinsman, uh, the, uh, the um, lions with the, with the recycling, I see a purpose on us receiving financial statements, but they request funding. We, that's part of the funding proposal, in my view. Anyway, yeah, it is. Like we, we need to see this in order to provide any funding. Okay, so yeah, that's that's my mistake. I should have separated the uh, I should have had this on is the accepting the financial statements. You're fixing that right now? I am for I'm gonna have this resolution to pass the to receive the financial statements. Yeah. And then we you guys can discuss the, the funding. Great, you, a second. If you care to. Yeah, okay, that's good. So we'll wait on that. Yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Councillor Friesen, what I, I missed up there. Oh, so just text me. I can't, I can't read your After the first period? Okay. It is, Update is one, one, one after one the first period. Okay, so <laughs> thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so I have to refresh this then? Yep. <coughs> Resolved that the Swan Valley Crisis Center financial statements be received. Moved by Councillor Memorial, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay. Now? We're asking for $1,000. Right. And first, I don't know if that's a sufficient amount, but who wouldn't agree with that? We, so I'm moving, I'm moving acceptance of the th or approval of, of the $1,000 grant. I have some comments on it, but. Uh, for the purpose of this, uh, my real question is whether or not a thousand dollars is enough for that particular issue. But it's probably the amount we've given them for the last twenty years. It is, and, and that's that's my point. Twenty years ago, a thousand dollars meant something. Today, a thousand dollars means something different. But anyway, but that's what they've asked for. So we'll give them everything they've asked for. But uh. so you're going to write that in there. I have two comments after we vote. One will be a broken record. I've probably said it with all the two council meetings since I've been here.
Better than Philip. Uh, I'll read it. Then. <coughs> No, you can refresh. Okay. Resolve that the funding request from the Swan Valley Christ Center of $1,000 be approved. Uh, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Moria. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so I have two comments. Um, one, the broken record comment start to start with, because you've all heard it, so I'm going to be very short. I find it astounding that we're approving monies before we approve our budget, um, and that we approve them without financial statements. And, and I know that Terry said that we've got a problem because of the way that the particular program we work, but surely we need to have some kind of framework that says this is our, this is our budget and this is our plan, and this is how we do it. I, I just, I can't even, I can't get my mind around it. And there's small amounts, I know we can work out the $1,000, so I, 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 that's why, in one sense, I don't care. Um, but it's just wrong. It's just in principle wrong not to have financial numbers in front of you, not to have a budget in front of you, say this is where we're taking it from. That's the first thing. And, and like I said, I've said that at, I think, virtually every meeting, so I'm not gonna belabor the point. The second is, is sort of new. We, we are not just randomly giving out grants. Um, we've agreed on that already. That's a fantastic change. Um, that we, you know, whatever first stuff. There are some things we should fund as, because it's a municipal responsibility. But surely we should have a policy for that. So I'd like to refer to, um, what the hell, what committee is, governance, I guess it is, the committee, uh, that committee, a, to the development of a policy for grants so that we have a policy. So that something like, the crisis center, which is a vital community service, we say this is the process for us deciding that this is a vital community service and how we're going to fund it and what and, and the process, which is should be something different than them getting the same grant that they've gotten for 20 years. Um, and, and there are other things that we probably shouldn't. So, um, you know, uh, but we should have a policy that says this is the way we do it, so it's easy for administration to know whether or not it's something that should even come to our table. And it's, it's something that's pretty routine as part of the budgeting process. And you'll recall my thoughts on the budget, which is that we should start that process in like August or September, not in February. Anyway, so with that, I don't know if I need a resolution to refer that to the committee or it can simply be reflected in the minutes so it's being referred to the committee for yeah, consideration. Just reflect it. Perfect. I don't that care as long as it gets done. The committee. And, and as far as the dollars, you know, like the approving amounts or whatever before we get to uh, looking at the budget. I totally agree. And, and traditionally, we, we would do that, especially large amount sums of money or these smaller ones, yeah, we sometimes pass or sometimes we didn't leave them till after. But you, traditionally, at this time, when they are asking for those uh, repeated, we've already, we've already been passed that already. So I guess in that case, but definitely when you look back at uh, the last resolution for uh, rise and looking at that, the process there is right to make sure we go through budget and all that first before we get to that stage. So I agree with you. <clears throat> okay, 10.1. Be it resolved that the accounts is followed by hereby approved for payment. General account checks number 24185 to number 24260 for a total of 170283 cents. Wire transfers for $3,139.50 plus a $45 fee for a total of $3,184.50. Payroll account checks number 4431 to number 4436 for a total of $104,610.64. Payroll accounts check number 4437 to number 4441 for a total of $12,196.71. Moved by Councillor. When Tony, second by Councillor Gray. Questions, discussion? None? Councillor Wen Tony. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe I am wrong because often I am, but um, I, I've just noticed that we've paid um, Michael for elk fence. I think this is the third time now 
do we require that much elk fence, or what do we use that for? Maybe I'm wrong, though, that I yeah, read it more than, than once. That's but probably for the landfill? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good deal compared to what we okay. buy downtown. Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. We, we, we eventually run out of the need for more elk fence? Yeah, we're, I, we're think, sure. I think they're close now, yeah. so we have the uh, fence off the east side that we've started on. Okay. Basically, this, if you've been down there before, <coughs> basically to stop the plastic bags and everything else from flying around into other people's shit. farmland and, and so on. Okay. No further discussion. Any question I had. All in favor? It's okay. Um, so the only other thing, again, a matter to refer to the governance committee. There's only one department that seems to use to buy meals. There, there's no policy, and and. Firstly, I don't believe in, in random expenditures. I think everything needs to be approved by way of either policy or specific resolution um, and or budget. And secondly, um, it should be equitable. That is, um, so one department goes for breakfasts and suppers. I've never had a we've never had a checklist without them having breakfasts or suppers or both on it. Um, and yet, other departments like administration never send one, and they surely. You know, we've got the secret national, uh, not secretary week anymore, I can't remember what it's called, but national support persons week. And, and, and on Wednesday is support persons day, we normally have, a, have our admin staff taken out and paper on a, a lunch, whatever. We should have a policy on that so that it's clear. Because just because, uh, and council to council, I would, well, the example I gave was we often sit from four until late if we have back to back to back meetings. We run out and grab our own sandwiches or whatever. Um, there should be a policy. It should be the same for everybody. If you're working in town business through a meal period, fair enough. If it has to be through the meal period for some reason. If, if you voluntarily choose to do it in the meal period, I'm not sure why we would pay for that. But there should be a policy in any event. And so it should be equitable. One can be drafted to the governance committee? Yeah. Go ahead, I have, I have a list of all these things that come up for governance. So did, it's not falling on deaf ears. I, I already know my list. I know. I, I, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm kind of just waiting until a new CAO comes a little bit too. No offense to Derek, but he's got lots on his plate. Yeah. So if, yeah, I am. I have no doubt as chairman you have it <laughs> Okay, so moving on, uh, there's uh, nothing for 11 for bylaws. Notice a motion. Uh, so we will uh, resolve the pursuit of the sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public for the purpose of um, personnel issues plus I believe we're going to be talking without it. Uh, well, personnel issues, there are, there, are, there are some contract issues we should discuss, there's a lawsuit we should discuss, we certainly should be discussing the union this meeting. Right. So those are all the things that we should discuss. Okay. So Move contracts. By. Lawsuit and personnel. Other than that, nothing. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, I thought you needed a mover. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. In favor? It's carried. Okay. Resolved that this regular meeting of Council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Mentoni. All in favor? It's carried. Good night. We'll stand.